Mom and Dad moved from the farm in 1985. It has been empty since then. Um, yeah. That's a long time. If they'd sold the farm and we went back and drove by it, I don't know how I'd feel. There would still be a sense of possession because it was part of your life. Not that you would own it, but you would still feel that it shaped you. It would be really hard to give up. Very, very hard. One of the favorite places is the front step. Sitting there talking to mom and dad, talking to my sister, talking to friends, petting the cat. Yeah, that's one of my favorite places, I think. Mom's ashes, we, we sprinkled some ashes there because of all the chats. I think dad was one of those lucky people who was born in a place he really was happy to be. And I don't know if everybody gets that in life. He loved prairies. He loved the farm. As he got older, I think he recognized he really loved us a lot too. The farm was very important. It was very important to him. We were important, but I think he just kind of relied on mom to deal with raising us. I think he thought he had to be stern. And as he aged, he learned that didn't have to be so. Happy New Year. After mom died, I went to the post office in town and the gal who works there said, you know, I'm so sorry about your mom. She said, when I first moved to this town, your mom was one of the first people who spoke to me and made me feel welcome. Then she said, your mom was so direct. Yeah, my heart was breaking at the time, but I kept thinking, don't forget that word direct, direct, direct. <laughs> Mom was so direct, and it was one of the most delightful things about her. That's enough, Chris, thank you. I could ramble on about them, but that summarizes some of it. In my mind, I always thought maybe we would go back, but when you're younger, you always think you could do everything. You really could do everything. You could live in Europe for a while and have a house here. Time doesn't work out that way. And a 16-hour drive is a long ways to go. It doesn't fit in the same way that it used to. I miss the solitude being able to see the sky. I miss the weather. Not that it's all good, but when you live with no wind, you miss it. The sound of the cows calling. I miss friends. Lots of laughter. When it was really cold, the telephone wires, they sang. It was a beautiful resonant sound. And there was that long distance sound of a car way far away and then it coming closer and closer and closer and closer and then whoosh, and then that disappear. And on a long weekend, mom would be like, oh, the traffic, oh, the traffic. Mom said, sell it. I remember her saying that. Get it cleaned up. That was the way she operated. And Dad's was a little more veiled in that he said, they're not making any more land. And you kind of drew from that that maybe you should keep it for a while. 
a wild and crazy hope is that somebody from the family said I'd like to go and live in Saskatchewan. I think for a long time you're comfortable not thinking about it. And then you, you start to realize that you will have to make decisions about things, about possessions, about objects. But there's a certain amount of excitement about the concept of saving something. When you go there, there's this, you know, sense of situational um, bearing that always feels stable. The sky looks the same and the land looks the same because the contours don't change. But everything's a little rougher. Everything's a little worn. Certain things are disappearing. When we go home, we, we go to the cemetery. You just walk around and you remember people. It's a comfort. And sometimes when I'm here walking with the dog and the moon is out here, I think it's shining on them too. <laughs> 